Hey y'all, welcome to Biblically Blonde. My name's Lacey and welcome. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to study step-by-step -step like Jen Wilkin suggests in her book, Women of the Word. So if you'd like to know how she tells you to study, keep watching. Alrighty y'all, so like I said in the intro, we're gonna be doing a step-by-step -step overview of how to study the Bible like Jen Wilkin suggests in her book, women of the word. My name is Lacey. If you're new to this channel, I'm Biblically Blonde. Here at Biblically Blonde, we seek wholehearted living for Christian women, meaning we seek Him with our minds, hearts, souls, and every other area of our life. We believe when we seek Him with our whole heart, we will find Him. And a lot of that includes knowing Scripture. And so that's what brought me to Jen Wilkins' book, Women of the Word. For many years, I wanted to know God's Word, but I was left with empty Bible studies, empty devotionals for women that just didn't get me any and I felt like I still didn't know God. And then I started reading this book and Biblically Blonde actually came from that. Now I do want to say I don't study the Bible exactly like Jen. Actually what I've done is I've taken these steps that I'm going to show you today and I've taken out what doesn't work for me and put in what does. I made it my own and so I have a very unique Bible study that is unique to my learning type while still doing a very in-depth study. And so that's what I recommend to you after you watch this video, maybe do one book or two from the Bible exactly like Jen suggests. And then make it your own. Take out what doesn't work for you. Maybe put something in that makes it a little bit helpful for you, that makes it easier. You know, whatever it is that you need, adapt it to your style, but still keep it very similar. Because the main blessing here of what she is telling us is that we don't have to just skim over something. We can dig deep into scripture. And that's the blessing of the way that she tells us to study the Bible that I've never heard before. Now, I do have a full review and outline of this book, and I will place it up here and in the description box below. So if you want to hear more about how I came to this book, why I love it so much, go check out that video. I do an outline of each chapter and just go in more depth of how she um, wants us to study and why it's so important to dig deeper into scripture. So now that I've told you kind of everything I need to do before we go into it, let's just go into it. So this, like I said, is exactly how she plans it out in this book, step by step. Now we'll start with what you need. So to get started, you need a binder. You're gonna get rid, well not get rid, still keep it. I still use mine. But that the, those, big, those big Bibles or the small Bibles or the Bibles on your phone or whatever you use, no. No, 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 no. We're not using those this time. We're going to actually take the Bible book by book by book. Now right now I'm on a study of James, so I'm using James as an example. And what she suggests, the first step is that you're gonna get yourself a binder and you're gonna print out the Bible in three different translations, double spaced. So I will show you mine. So this is just a quick example. You're gonna go and you're gonna print out your book of the Bible, chapter by chapter, and you're gonna put it in your three ring binder. So this is the ESV, yes, this is the ESV version here, and I have it all printed out with lots of room for me to write. I don't think this is double-spaced, but I don't know. It's plenty of room to write and highlight and all that kind of stuff. Then you're gonna do the same thing to two other translations. Now, one thing that I've done differently in mine is I have them side by side. A, I don't really like wasting that much paper. I go to the library to print it out. It costs me less and you know, recycling and all that. So I do like to have it side by side. You don't have to. Jen Wilkins suggests that you actually print them out the same way like the ESV is. It's up to you how you want to do it. But I will say Jen wants you to print it out each one on their own. This is just me and my personal preference. You're also going to want to have a few highlighters, a few pins to take notes, maybe even some post-it notes, whatever you need to catch your eye on certain verses that you know you want to write down and, and all of that. So get yourself a binder, print you out some of the Bible books, and you're ready to go. So step one, after you get all of your materials, is you're gonna begin with a purpose. You're gonna figure out where is this book in the meta narrative of the Bible? Where does this fit in the theme? The Bible, Genesis to Revelation, tells us a story. It's not just random books placed together, it's a story. And so you're gonna find out where your specific book fits in the general theme. 
That's step one. Step two is you're going to study with perspective. And this is where we're going to answer all the archeological questions that need to be known before you read a single ounce of scripture in whatever book that you are reading. The questions that you are going to want to answer and write down are who wrote it, when was it written, to whom was it written, in what style was it written, why was it written. So all of those questions, the who, what, when, where, and why, you're going to answer. Now luckily, this doesn't take hardened research to find out. You remember when I was talking about those big Bibles that we're used to? Open that one back up again and all of those answers should be in your Bible. If you have a basic Bible that doesn't have any type of expansion on it, it's just a quick Google, Google search. You can find all of this information online within five seconds. It's very, very easy. Don't be kind of alarmed by that. It's very easy to find. If it's not in your Bible, Google it. So once we understand the purpose and the perspective, so where, why is this in the Bible, and when did it take place, who wrote it, all of that jazz, we're gonna go on to step three, which is where Jen starts the comprehension, interpretation, and application phase of the study. This is the nitty gritty of the study. So what she suggests for the comprehension part in step three is you're going to read the entire book or however many allotments, like for example, if you're doing Genesis, it's gonna be broken up, Exodus, it's gonna be broken up. You're gonna do however many you've decided to group together and read it all through one time over and one translation. You're gonna start there. And you're just gonna jot down a few notes. Okay, what do I think this said? Nothing really out there. Just kind of jot it down, get a general idea. Then you're gonna go into it chapter by chapter, verse by verse. You're gonna annotate repeated words. You're going to look for repeated phrases, ideas. You're gonna then read two other translations. So go through the first one, highlight repeated words, see if there's anything that, kind of an idea that is, you know, gone throughout, and just take it chapter by chapter. Once you do one chapter, go on and look at the other two translations and do the same thing there. Or maybe if a word stood out to you, you're gonna look it up in that other translation. If you don't know what certain words mean, circle them, look them up, look them up in the other translations, see if a different word is used. This is where you're gonna mark it up. You're gonna try to see if you understand what it is saying. After you have marked the whole thing up and read all three translations, you're gonna then do your summary statements and a rough outline. Now don't be intimidated. This doesn't mean that you have to go back into school and do a perfect outline. This is just for you. This is for your learning. So what you're gonna wanna do is after each chapter, write a summary statement of what's happening in the chapter, then go back and do an outline of the whole book or whatever sections of scripture you've chosen to tackle at one time. And you're just gonna outline it all. Start at chapter one, what is it saying? What do these five verses say? What do the next five verses say? And just do it by one or two, three words, general outline, nothing too big. So I wanna emphasize here that in this part of comprehension, we are not seeking a single outside source. The only sources that we are seeking are the three translations in front of us and maybe the Oxford Dictionary if we don't know what a certain word means. No cross-references, no paraphrases, and no commentaries yet. No podcasts, no YouTube videos, nothing. The only thing we're seeking is scripture itself. Then, once we've done the outline and the summary statements, we're gonna move on to interpretation. This is where we can seek those things, but we're gonna do them in order. The first thing we're going to do is seek cross-references. Now, a lot of times, like with me, when I print them off from a very popular Bible Gateway uh, site, the cross-references are at the bottom, and I will see here if I can find an example, yeah. Okay, so at the bottom here, can you see? I don't know. The cross-references are listed there. Ah, sorry, that was confusing. So the cross-references are at the bottom. They can also be in your Bible. Like I said, don't throw away that big Bible. It's gonna come in handy. You're just not, and I know a lot of people wanna mark up their Bible and they're like, oh, it's a study Bible, I'm fine. Yeah, I do the same thing in my big Bible still, it, but it's just different. It's different, trust the process, trust Jen Wilkin, go for it, do one book in this, put that old Bible aside, only look at it from time to time, like for cross-references, and trust the process. Okay, back to the thing. 
after we do cross references, then we're going to look at paraphrasing and then we're going to look at commentary. So the last thing we're going to do is see what someone else thinks about it because we want to understand what it is saying on our own. We're then going to compare. We're going to say, okay, am I aligned with what this other person says? Am I kind of off? Is something need to be clarified? Now this is important here. Just because someone's commentary may be different than what you thought it was saying doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means that you interpreted it differently. Now, if it's really out there and completely off, what I would suggest is to go back and repeat the process one through three, the steps, and see if you come to a different conclusion. Because if it's really off, then maybe you didn't understand. But I would say if it's just slightly off or you kind of took something different from it, don't be alarmed. We all take something different from scripture. That's why there's so many pastors. That's why there's so many different messages out there. So many Bible teachers. We all are supposed to take something different, but I would be alarmed if it's crazy different and really out there because then maybe something isn't completely adding up. So then finally we get to the application part and that's where we're actually going to apply it to our life. Jen wants us to look at the view of God, view of self, and our response. And so for the view of God, we are going to say, what does it teach me about God? Jen says that the Bible is a book about God, not about us. And amen, yes it is. And so we want to know in every single chapter, every single verse, verse of scripture, what does it teach us about God? We're going to write that out. Then we're going to view self. How am I changed by the scripture? What does the scripture do for my life? What has this taught me? You're going to journal out a few paragraphs, few sentences, whatever, and kind of look deep within yourself. Then finally, your response. What should I do in response? Now, not all scripture is going to require us to have a full out change of life response, but even the little things, this is where we're really going to say, what does this tell me to do? That's the application part of it. So we don't do the application until we fully have read through, researched, studied, done all of that jazz, marked up those scriptures. We can give you a summary statement for each chapter in the book. And then we finally come to what it means for us because we have to understand scripture in God's eyes, what it says about God before we can even think about it through us. So that is how to study the Bible like Jen Wilkin from the book, women of the word, how to study the Bible with our hearts and our minds. Now, like I said in the intro, I don't study like this exactly. I have changed it up, but what I did is I started with this and I worked my way out. And so that's what I encourage you to do. If you were moved by this book or you're encouraged by some of the things you've heard Jen Wilkins say, start with this outline, start doing it like she suggests, and then work your way out and kind of see what fits for you. That's what I suggest. Give it a try. This method has changed my life. I used to be so just, I didn't understand scripture. I was like, I am way too dumb for this. This is way out of my league. I can't get it. And then if I did and I went and got a Bible study, it was all personal and like reflection and devotional style. And it wasn't actually digging into scripture. So I would read scripture and not understand it. And then I started doing this method and it changed everything for me. And that's why I have such a love for scripture now. So I encourage y'all to do this method and then kind of find what works for y'all or maybe this exact method works for y'all. Whatever the case, I encourage you to read scripture. It will change your life. Thank y'all for watching. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe and you'll see more videos. I do Bible studies. I do sermon messages type studies. I do daily talks, sometimes a vlog. I do everything. Thank y'all for watching. I love y'all. Bye.